For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sanel Damini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Satna to discuss his column titled South African Crisis Addressing Despair, Hope and the Prophetic, Part 1. Welcome, Raymond, and thank you very much for making time. Thank you. Thank you. So you say that uh, you have broken with the ruling African National Congress as well as the SACP, but you do not condemn those uh, who have remained in the organization who are in good faith trying to change uh, from within. But can one believe that it is possible to change from within, even with the evidence that you provide? Are they in good faith? What I do believe is that some people have wrongly analyzed what they can do inside the ANC, but in good faith, they are doing their best to change it. Where these people hold government positions, as far as I know, they've stolen nothing. They've just done their work. They've done their best to make things better and to make things according to the principles that were earlier associated with the ANC. But it becomes less and less credible. Obviously, it became less and less credible during the Zuma era, but even now during the Ramaphosa era. I'm not saying the people are not in good faith. It's not credible in the sense that it's very hard to see that they can achieve much given the level of collapse of the state. I mean, I was reading yesterday that there are 140,000 new leaks every day in the city of Johannesburg. So that infrastructure has been collapsed to a point that people live with no water for weeks or don't get water at all in the rural, in some parts of of the rural areas. Uh, And, uh, you know, we're not getting power outages now, but what is, is it related to elections? Is it really being fixed up? Or are they trying to show the ANC can do something, which they are doing through the use of diesel, which is very expensive? Uh, will we find the day after elections that we get back to stage six again? So what I'm saying really is, I do know some people inside the ANC. Some of them I have contact with, some of them I don't have contact with, but I don't think that they are crooks uh, and I don't think that they are correct in giving the benefit of the doubt. If you gave the benefit of the doubt five years ago or or 10 years ago or whenever Zuma came in 2007, 2008, he became president, Um, It seems to me we've given them enough of a benefit of the doubt, and I'm not so sure that it's good, Uh, it's correct, but I'm reluctant to question the honesty of some people who I don't have reason to think that they are dishonest and that they're not in good faith. So now having said that some acts are in good faith, you also indicate that uh, things are as bad as if no, and if not worse uh, after our uh, president, the former president, Jacob Zuma. Does that not now affect the logic of accepting the choice of some uh, to remain within the ANC? Yes, it's the um, sustainability of this idea that some people are going to change from within is becoming more and more difficult to hold to. And consequently, we also may question the good faith of people who use this, but I'm not willing to question the good faith of people unless they are deriving some benefit from staying within. Now, obviously, if you're a cabinet minister, It's a very well-paid job and a good pension and all of these things. But I don't want to rush into judging people. I mean, I will judge those who have been found with their hands in the till, found to have diverted funds towards themselves and their family. There are a lot of them, and they're in parliament, they're in cabinet, all sorts of places. 
But I do believe there are still some people who wrongly believe that in good faith that they can change this from within. And lastly, Professor, you say that now the issue of resolving our political problems is not a question of adherence uh, to one or other doctrine, but it's on whether people care, uh, feel compassion for the poor and vulnerable. That is all well and good, but uh, will it take hold in politics unlike religious organization or that of social welfare or even healthcare people? It's logical that if someone preaches honesty and then he picks someone's pockets the moment he's left the stage, well, then you don't trust that person. So what I'm saying is the declarations of adherence to socialism, liberalism, all of these things, or, or Christianity or Judaism or Islam, all of these things are all very well. But some people who are religious, and you said that maybe some religious people can buy into this, some people who are religious are stealing from the congregations. But what I'm saying is our problems are not ones that get resolved about is through debating whether socialism is a good thing and what is neoliberalism and can we get rid of neoliberalism. The main problem is that things are happening to people today and they don't care. You know, the minister in the presidency, Kumbotso Njaveni, immediately after the Albert Street explosion, she said the government has got no obligation to provide housing for illegal immigrants. She didn't wait for the bodies to be recovered, nothing. And no one has reprimanded her. Since then, they've actually found the majority of the people in that building, the majority of those who died are actually South Africans. So you've got at the very top a lack of concern for people who are dying or who are homeless. Instead, you spew out xenophobic statements from the presidency. And that, to me, is the problem. People do not care. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Satna in conversation with policy discussing South African crisis, addressing despair, hope, and the prophetic part one.